Okay, today we're going to be talking about partial functions. Now, in a lot of ways, partial functions are like subsets. You look at them just like subsets. There's slightly different terminology. So here we have the, uh, the x, the, which is the domain, mapped into the codomain, which is y. And, you know, this simple input-to-output relationship, like a typical function. Now, if, if, the, if x prime is equal to x, and it's a total function. Now, recall from the last video, we talked about how when you have a subset or equal to, uh, just like this, just like this right here. That's exact. That's that's what this is. When a when a set is equal to a total function, can be viewed as a equal subset. You know, x prime to x. So in a lot of ways, it's very similar. Now, we see here that a is mapped onto two and c is mapped onto one, but b is not mapped to three. So the, the function is you know, partial. It's not total. If b was mapped to three, then we could take the total function and you know each input having one out, output. Now. How, how, how can this really be applied? You see, this is, sounds like, you know, the redundant because we, talk, we sort of talked about this last video. Now, suppose we have the example. So let's suppose we're, take, we're trying to find the answer to, you know, log of n. Now, lo the logs are defined for the natural numbers. You will, well, actually, that's, that's not totally correct. It should be for the pos positive reals because you can technically take a log, a log of them of any number and not end up getting a complex number. The answer will still be in the set of reals. But um, for simplicity's sake, we're just going to take, we're just going to worry about natural numbers for this video. So let's say we have log of n. Now we know, like I just said, logs can, you can't take a logarithm of a negative number and end up with a real number. It just doesn't happen. You, you end up getting a complex number. So you take the logarithm of negative 10, which is like, you know, 1, I think, plus like 1.3i or something like that. That would be like the log of negative 10. Again, it's complex. There's an imaginary part to it. So you can say that log negative 10 is part of the complex set. So this is how you can technically use set theory and to like um, you can use set theory to study some other math concepts such as number theory and um, a, a, lots of others. You can take this and extend it to a lot of different things, but particularly number theory because if you can do this, this kind of simplifies, you know, like you can make a lot of general statements about numbers. And, you know, this is right here. Log of negative 10 is not in the member of real. So you can write it as log negative 10 is not if you remember set membership the not which is the epsilon with a slash to it is not contained in the set of reals so you could so that that's sort of an example of uh, partial partial functions i think well actually i shouldn't say that entirely let's let's uh yeah that's you, you we can say that that, that that's that's again like the natural numbers are integers, but you can take the log of anything, so that's a partial function there. The log of negative ten is not contained in the real; it's contained in the complex set of numbers. So that's uh, not not completely defined, defined in some cases, but undefined in others. And uh, that's all for this video. It's like again similar to subsets and supersets, just taking um, part. It's like taking a subset of one. Um, function and then analyzing it to see how can it be applied to another set, the entire whole set. And that's all for this video. Um, next video we're going to be talking about uh, infinite unions and then uh, we'll, and in, and infinite intersections and things like that. And after that we're going to uh, dive into what's known as a continuum hypothesis. And uh, that will probably be a good, a good maybe you know, one-fourth of the video series. And that, that's, that's all for now. I hope you guys enjoy. See you guys later.